Welcome back, my name is Alex Beltran. I talk real estate and I had the pleasure of taking an impromptu trip to Fargo, North Dakota, where realistically, I don't know anything about Fargo, North Dakota, other than the fact that there's a 1996 movie and there's that FX series with uh, Bilbo or Watson or you know, whatever his name is. Anyway, I did zero research into Fargo other than the directions to the hotel. And I'm gonna tell you guys right now, I was like a little kid on the way to Disneyland because I knew that I was gonna discover a new real estate market that realistically is on no one's radar other than, you know, the 125,000 people that live in Fargo and however many people live in the surrounding areas, which seems to be like eight. On the way up there, there was a whole lot of nothing except snow. I don't know if you've ever driven in that area, but the speed limit in South Dakota is 80 miles an hour with that much ice. That 80 miles an hour feels like you're flying at like 300 miles an hour. I am Californian. I understand that speed limits, they're just suggestions, but I suggest you drive a little slower than that 80 miles an hour when there's a ton of ice everywhere. Anyway, you're driving nothing, 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 then boom, Fargo. I pulled off and immediately went to the best truck stop in all of the US, Love's. All my road trip warriors know what I'm talking about when it comes to Love's truck stops. Once I got there, I decided to do some free roaming around Fargo. I quickly busted out the Zillow app to check out where all the homes were and catch my bearings. And then I quickly proceeded to get absolutely lost because all the streets in Fargo are numbered. <laughs> I'm so used to streets going east to west that are either named or letters of some sort and north to south being numbered, but apparently not in Fargo. Now, whenever I go to a new city, I like to check out all of the real estate from the entry level to the luxury properties. What I didn't think would happen is that I would finish driving this entire route in less than two hours. It basically takes 15 minutes to get anywhere in Fargo. What I saw was nothing but positive. First of all, Fargo is a very, very beautiful city. I mean, right now it is completely snow covered, but you can tell that there's a lot of pride of ownership in all the buildings, in all the houses in Fargo. It is a very, very nice city. There is so much expansion going on in Fargo, especially in West Fargo, in Horace. I mean, I get it. If you start building East, then you, you know, run into Minnesota, but nonetheless, there's a lot of expansion and it's only clearly gonna get bigger. That huge apartment complex on 170th and 32nd was way overbuilt for the area. And it may seem that way now, but I think that building is setting up a precedent. If that is the future of West Fargo, then take my money. I decided to keep driving south to Horace because that seemed like where all the new development is happening. If you're from Fargo, what are they building south of Horace? Is that like a lake or like a huge park that they're building? Because if it is, that 90 acre lot across the street is a very, very enticing property. I personally don't have the resources to capitalize on it, but that property seems to be a diamond in the rough because Fargo's expanding in that direction anyway. It's only a matter of time before that particular property is gonna make someone a whole lot of money. Hey, so uh, future Alex here, I'm actually editing the video right now. I actually looked into what that is. It is not a lake, it is actually a diversion inlet structure, basically a levee. Apparently that river that separates Minnesota and Fargo or you know North Dakota floods quite a bit and this is to divert water around Fargo. So that 90 acre property that I was talking about, maybe not as enticing as I originally thought, but it just goes to show that you have to do your due diligence on everything. I also quickly want to talk about something that I personally didn't really like, and this has nothing to do with Fargo as a whole. This is just a prime example of when a builder decides to maximize his profits and screw over the owners. The frontier area is a very nice neighborhood. Don't get me wrong, there are brand new apartments, and then right behind that, brand new duplexes, and then right behind that, brand new single family homes, and then right behind that, luxury homes. And unfortunately for those luxury homes, they lose a whole lot of value because of the neighborhood that they are in. Seriously, there's like a $1.3 million property that is like, right next to like a $400,000 single family residence, which is fine. But when I drove past it, I thought that that $1.3 million property was part of the regular 
single family residences. And that's part of the issue. It is very badly laid out. It's a classic case of builders solely focused on the profits. And look, no shame, make your paper boo boo. I'm not against people making a whole lot of money in real estate. That's you know, kind of the point. Because they're maximizing the building site to the point where the homeowners of the luxury properties lose value because they broke the first three rules of real estate. Location, location, location. There were a couple things that made me laugh about this neighborhood. There was a house there that is a self-proclaimed chateau. Um, I'm sorry to break it to you, but um, luxury track homes are not chateaus. This is a chateau. <laughs> And the other thing that made me laugh was the fact that there were two modern monstrosities in that neighborhood that are literally bringing down the value of that entire neighborhood even more. They, I'm gonna stop right there, but I'm just saying, all right? <laughs> I checked out a lot of the properties that were closer to downtown, which are some of the older properties. And it's hard for me to judge those because on paper, they could have a really good ROI. However, I don't know if that's the area for rentals. They seem more like forever homes. And what I mean by forever homes is that there's a lot of people that have lived in those properties for 15 years plus, some way plus plus. And if there's anything that I know about those neighborhoods is that it's tough to get a good ROI and sometimes tough to get a good tenant unless there is like a must have school zone or something like that. I don't know why that is and I really can't prove it scientifically, but it's been my experience. I mean, clearly all that really means is that you need more time to really kind of focus down on a correct area. Naturally, being so close to downtown, I had to check it out. I ended up having barbecue at Jay's Barbecue where they have pretty damn good brisket. I highly recommend it. If anyone ever decides to go, tell them that I sent you, even though they don't know me at all. <laughs> oh, and uh, liquor stores in Fargo are called bottle shops. Um, not relevant to the story at all, but I thought it was pretty interesting. And of course I had to check out the wood chipper. I was like a little kid taking so many photos of it like it was some type of celebrity. I wish I would have had time to watch Fargo while in Fargo. Maybe next time. <laughs> That would have been pretty sweet. Anyway, is Fargo real estate worth it? I think so. I really do think it is. Um, it's not a priority for me right now, but I will absolutely be monitoring Fargo from now on. And if a good deal happens to pop up, yeah, heck yeah, I'll entertain it. Now for 2023, I'm personally looking for properties that I can immediately cash flow. If I were to buy something in Fargo in that Horace area, it would most likely be raw land or like older homes that will soon be swallowed up by development around it. I mean, obviously I would need more than a day and a half to really kind of figure out what I would really be looking for, but I have a feeling that that's kind of what I would personally be doing if I were to buy in Fargo in the near future. With that said, if I find something else, like I said, I will entertain it. Anyway, what are some good surprise cities that you have come across? You know what I'm talking about, the types of cities where you don't really put any thought into it, but next thing you know, you go visit and you realize, hey, wait a minute, there's something here. <laughs> go ahead and comment in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. With that said, I will catch you guys next week. Peace.